Skywatch Media News for February the 19th, 2020. In recent weeks, there has been a great deal of attention centered around the unusual events happening at the Earth's poles. Both poles are behaving quite strangely, which is making it more difficult for scientists to conduct accurate forecasts regarding the changes occurring at the ends of the world. At this moment, we are seeing opposite effects playing out across these polar regions. The Arctic is suddenly seeing a dramatic increase in sea ice, while Antarctica is seeing record heat and a sharp decline in the overall extent of the glacial ice shelves. Recent data taken between the fall of 2019 and February of this year is showing that the sea ice within the Arctic polar circle is increasing and has actually reached its largest February ice cover in the past 11 years. The sudden increase is significant because it wasn't that long ago that the sea ice appeared to be in a steady decline. So the opposite effect is happening now. But why? In recent years, we have seen the Earth's jet stream acting erratically, where the north to south polar vortex dips much further into the southern latitudes towards the equator, creating a weaker jet stream that produces more intense winter storms in the mid latitudes. This year, we are seeing the complete opposite effect. The polar vortex is creating a strong jet stream that is remaining much further to the north, where the frigid air is concentrated in the polar regions. The change in the atmospheric circulation patterns this year is having an unusual effect on the climatic conditions across the northern hemisphere. The profound effects of an unpredictable jet stream with positive oscillation occurring in the northern extremes are now evident. At this moment, much of the United States and parts of Europe are having what is referred to as a mild winter. But the same cannot be said for the Arctic polar region, where sea ice is showing signs of recovering, at least for the moment. Meanwhile, in the North Atlantic, explosive cyclogenesis is taking place. What is so noteworthy about the atmospheric conditions across the North Atlantic is the frequency and the intensity of the storms that have been created, where three extratropical systems formed within just 10 days. Now this is unprecedented in that it just doesn't happen on such a grand scale as we are seeing this year. Remember the same, that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That saying certainly rings true in this regard. These immense systems, referred to as bomb cyclones, are developing rapidly in the North Atlantic, and they are reaching incredible intensity. In a region that has already seen its share of very strong storms in recent years.
Meanwhile, on the other end of the world, Antarctica set the warmest temperatures ever recorded on the continent. During the second week of February, researchers recorded a high of 20.7 degrees Celsius, which is nearly 70 degrees Fahrenheit, on an island off the coast of the continent. They described the temperature record as incredible and abnormal. The reading was taken at a monitoring station on Seymour Island which is part of a chain of the islands on the Antarctica Peninsula, the northernmost part of the continent. Antarctica also experienced record heat in the previous week, recording a temperature of nearly 65 degrees on the continent's northernmost peninsula. This reading surpassed the previous record of 63.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which was set in March of the year 2015. The February the 7th reading is impressive because it has been only five years since the previous record was set, and this reading was almost one degree centigrade higher than the 2015 reading. What we may be witnessing in Antarctica is a combination of natural variations and significant earth changes that have already begun. It's really quite fascinating, but also very disturbing to witness the incredible changes that are taking place in Antarctica. The continent has been retreating across the seafloor and shedding notable icebergs for the past two decades, which scientists often attribute to internal climate variability. Although climate variability may be one factor in the melting of the glacial ice at such locations as Pine Island, there is another one that scientists seem reluctant to include, the geothermal heat that is produced by subglacial volcanic activity in the region. In order to get to the bottom of the changes taking place at the southern end of the world, we must consider the alternatives. A study published back in the year 2018 indicates that an active subglacial volcano is melting the Pine Island Glacier located on the western Antarctica's ice shelf. This also coincides with a 2014 report that demonstrates the presence of glacial ice melt from bedrock heat flow on Pine Island as well as the Thwartes Glacier. So what this is telling us is that the West Antarctica ice shelf melted and retreated thousands of years ago, and then just as quickly it recovered. By combining these scientific results, it then becomes apparent that the melting of the West Antarctica ice sheet resulted from volcanic and geothermal heat flow, and this then is what is driving the ice melting from below the surface. But what about the ice melt on the surface of Antarctica? A recent study indicated that warmer ocean water is being pushed towards the continent, which in addition to the northwesterly winds, contributes to the surface melt. So essentially what the scientists are saying is that the concept of internal climate variability is a determining factor in surface melt. Now, if you're a scientist looking for research funding, then it is in your best interest to establish the concept of climate variability. Because although they do not want to push the idea of a volcano from beneath creating the geothermal melting of the ice sheets, they realize that this could be the principal source for the subglacial melting in Antarctica. On the other hand, everything that is happening above the surface of the continent is even more controversial because the geothermal heat rising from below is incapable of melting the ice on the surface 
because of its immense thickness. So what we have is a catch-22 situation. There are no easy answers and way too much speculation with respect to the changes that are happening in Antarctica. While looking to the sky, I am reminded of a quote by Alison Hawthorne Deming. Once you realize that human actions affect every bit of earth and sky, you realize that the environment isn't just what surrounds us. It's all one whole. Thanks for watching.